So after playing with the Inventables machine for the last couple of days, I've really learned how to use the software, made some adjustments to the machine, got it to work a lot better. One of the things that I think has the steepest learning curve for folks is actually sitting down and using the software. Building the machine took me about three full days of good hour, couple hour long chunks. If you don't have the time to set up the machine and do that correctly, it won't run right. So if you don't have the right time to set up the machine, don't bother buying the machine. I've done amp rebuilds and some other electronic work and the directions do make sense. It just takes a little bit of time for you to re read through it and get it done. So once you build the machine, learning the software is the hardest part. Lots of different software is available for CNC machines. Inventables has their easel software, which has its limitation, but works. I'll never route out a full guitar body using this CNC machine. It'll take too long. And for me using a bandsaw and a pin router, I can do that relatively quickly, five, six minutes, get a body cut out and pin route it and be done. But what I can't do is some of this high-end design work that I, I really want to do. So this is a design that I would put on a back of a guitar body or into some aluminum as I'm going to be playing around with different things. And I could just never do this by hand. It would take ages to do this. So with the CNC machine, I can do these highly designed guitars, highly customized based on different materials that I just couldn't get to with doing this by hand. Once I learned how to set up the machine properly, I did have uh, a bunch of scrap I've been testing on. This is a totem pole. And you can see as I stepped down in, the belts weren't tight enough and it began to slip. And so you can see this sort of screwing up. And then here I was doing a fractal carving and halfway through I paused it and restarted it and the whole thing shifted. So I've got a lot of different scrap I've been playing with to try and get this to work correctly. And that's when I realized the software and the material that you're using and the router bits are what really needs uh, the time and attention against. I did replace their 24 volt router with a Bosch Colt router. Significant improvement in performance. This was done using the 24 volt and it just wasn't stepping right and it wasn't spinning fast enough to actually cut the wood properly. This is just a piece of poplar. But once I did that with the Bosch, it took me about a half hour. I noticed significant improvements in routing, significant improvement in how the piece looked as I pulled it off and was really happy with the machine. There's also a bunch of other upgrades that I'm going to end up doing in terms of stiffening the crossbar and the sidebars so that I can you know, route it full speed. I posted this video the other day where I used the USC metal inlay and did this Paisley design. And once you get the design in and you learn how to use the different bits and the different speeds, it does have uh, different ways of picking and choosing what material you're using, what bits you're using, uh, but there's some fine tuning that you need to learn as well. So I, I think my biggest concern for the machine are doing some upgrades in terms of running the right router, running the right bits, and then making sure that you spend the time to learn the software. A lot of guys don't want to do woodworking to learn software, but if you don't get the software down, you're not going to get what you need out of the machine. So I'm pretty happy with the Inventable CNC machine. I'll definitely be using it more. You'll be seeing it more in the videos that I have up and coming. I actually moved it uh, outside now up to the garage because with the bigger router, it does make a little bit more mess that spins a lot faster. So I've got a custom table for it built, and I'll just continue to iterate on my designs, iterate on learning the software, and begin to play more and more and more. I don't think I'll show every video of what I'm doing, but I think it's really important that you guys set up the time to learn the software versus just building the machine. Building the machine is sort of the big hurdle, and once you get it going, if you don't fine tune it and sit down and learn the software, it won't do what you want it to do, and you'll get very frustrated. So make sure as you guys are looking at these machines, looking at their capabilities, you're understanding that technically you won't be doing as much woodworking in some instances because you have to sort of plan it out on the computer and then bring it back upstairs and run it. Um, so if you're making tables or benches and you like woodworking, you're going to continue to do that. If you want to really do high-end design stuff, this is definitely the right machine to do for anything. 
they have different apps to do gears and inlays and I'm still learning all of that uh, but as I've played around I, I see the easel software is pretty capable it does not do 3d carving so if I'm going to do some 3d carving like on a carve top Les Paul Paul Reed Smith I cannot do that with the easel software um, so for me the back and forth that I've had recently is do I buy upgraded software outside of this learn how to use the different 3D features of that software and then back into this or what do I need to do and, and I'll, I'll get there eventually but for right now I'm going to be doing some high-end designs and we'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next vid.